Hi, everyone. So, yeah. <laughs> Actually forgot what I was gonna say. So, a uh, really quick idea of what your test is gonna be like tomorrow. Um, first, you need to know the formulas for, why is this, why does this look so crappy? What's going on here? All right. First, you need to know the formulas, but the formulas will be given to you, right? So we just need to know what each piece means. So let's talk about exponential growth and decay. Oh, hey, buddy. What are you doing? Get out of here. What are you, what are you kidding? Get out of here. What are you nuts? Really? Really? Right there, huh? Stop. Stop it. With this camera, dude, dude. I don't. What am I supposed to do with this? What? Hey, 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 hey! Stop that! Stop that! All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Jeez. Nutcase. Okay. Anyway, sorry about that. Um. Okay. So uh, he licked it. Ugh, gosh, he licked the paper. Okay. You need to know exponential growth and decay. All right. So the formula is y equals um, a times the quantity of one plus or minus r to the t power. So understand that a, I really don't wanna make this video again. A is the initial amount. All right, buddy. Um, like what we start with, right? Uh, r is the rate of growth or decay as a decimal, all right? So really quick, let's say we had a 4.5% growth or whatever, that's 0 0.045, right? So just make sure you do that. T stands for time. It's usually in years, but it'll tell you, all right? So that's growth and decay. Now, compound interest, kind of like the growth formula, but we have to put the compound rate in there. So this is Y equals A. Uh, times 1 plus r over n to the n times t power, where a is still the initial amount, r is the rate as a decimal. n, however, the new thing here is the compound rate. Now, compound rate, um, I think we'll give those to you too. I don't remember. But if it's like annually, it's 1, monthly is 12, stuff like that. Okay? So that's just something there. All right, um, so you're gonna need to be able to uh, kind of put that all together into a problem, right? And the calculator, you'll use that too. All right, next, so that's the first part of the test, or the second part, it doesn't really matter, it's just the part of the test, all right? So, um, okay, you need to know characteristics of these things, of these functions, characteristics, okay. So what are the characteristics? Um, and behavior. Okay. And you will have a graph for these end behavior problems. So for example, let's pretend like we have a little graph here and let's say that it looks like that. Sorry, that's hideous. I'm trying to hold the phone, which is the camera in one hand and I'm trying to write with the other hand, but I'm looking through the camera at my hand. Like I'm not looking at the paper, so it's challenging, okay. Let's say that this line approaches uh, three. Okay. As X approaches negative infinity, right? As X approaches negative infinity, what does F of X approach? Well, as X approaches negative infinity, F of X approaches positive infinity. On this side though, as X approaches positive infinity, F of X approaches three, right? Because it's, it's reaching this asymptote here, right? So as X goes left forever, Y goes up. And as X goes right forever, Y goes to three. Okay, that gives us the other characteristic that's really important, the asymptote. So the asymptote is the barrier line. It's the line where the function kind of starts to level off a little bit. And that always is a line. So this one in particular is Y equals three because I'm saying this approach is three. It doesn't actually hit three, right? So the asymptote is Y equals three. Um, Range is lowest to highest. Domain is always negative infinity to positive infinity. Oh, uh, that's pretty much the hardest ones. The, the two hardest ones are end behavior and asymptote. Right? 
Let's see. Is there anything else on here? For that? I don't think so. Um. Hmm. Uh, know that the um, asymptote and the y-intercept, they go hand in hand, pretty much. Um, so, like, whatever the y-intercept is, it's typically what the asymptote is, right? So, in a graph, like, of 2 to the x power, run out of space. Let's see, 2 to the x power, right? So, the y-intercept is 1, and the asymptote is y equals 0. <clears throat> so, whatever the y-intercept is, the asymptote's 1 less. Right, so whatever the asymptote is, or I'm sorry, whatever the y-intercept is, the asymptote is one less. So subtract one. Okay. Um, transformations. You can tell that I wasn't super prepared because I'm like looking at the test and I'm trying to put it together for you. This is a six-minute video. Well, it was like a minute and a half of Titan being a jerk. Transformations. Okay. Um, let's just go. Let's go the whole craziness here. really high up sorry all right so what are the transformations that you're gonna see tomorrow that negative sign is a reflection on the x-axis two is the vertical stretch of two units three is the base that was not changed this is a left one and this is a down four okay so those are the ones you're going to see. Um, the only difference would be, like if this was a minus sign, that'd be right. And this was a plus sign, it'd be up. The only difference is going to be here. Let's say it was a, a negative one half in the front, right? Still an x-axis, but this is a vertical shrink. You might also see the word compression, right, of one half. Okay. All right, uh, next. Sorry, I'm trying to cover like everything. You're gonna have rate of change. Please, I hope that you know how to do that. This is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We'll give you that formula, all right? And we're almost done. Um, oh, when we say the word multiplier, We mean, um, how did you get from one y value to the next? Like, how did you get from one to the next, right? So, for example, let's say I gave you this, this table here. So, one, two, three. And then let's say this was uh, four. Seven. This is probably a bad one to use. It's <laughs> probably stupid. Um, What is the multiplier? Well, the multiplier is four, right? Because four times four is 16, 16 times four is 64, and 64 times four is 256. So the multiplier is four here, right? And then the initial value was four. So the starting amount was four, because that's when, right, x was, and then the multiplier is four, okay? So that's how that goes. Um, that's it. Titan, you wanna say goodbye since you ruined half the video? Sorry. Say goodbye. Bye.